people think of a hand grenade, typically what they're talking about is an explosive device that could be thrown with the hand, that is filled with a, some sort of exploding chemical, some sort of fragmentation like glass shards or metal shards, or some sort of container that'll fragment. Typically, modern grenades include an igniter, some sort of explosive, and shrapnel. But the evolution of the hand grenades, this is an incredible evolution. So what we're going to take a look at is the history of the hand grenade. The first sign of any kind of hand grenade device came around in around 670 AD. What they used was small ceramic jars filled with what was referred to as Greek fire. There's a lot of records of the use of Greek fire, but most historians believe it's naphtha and quicklime. Naphtha being a liquid hydrocarbon, natural gas, petroleum, and a distillate of coal tar and peat. Quicklime, as calcium oxide, works as the oxidizing agent. It is very flammable when it's exposed to water. So typically, Greek fire was used on ships. The first use of it in ceramic jars came around 670 AD. Typically used to set enemy ships on fire with the use of flamethrowing weapons from Greek fire. By throwing these two ships, you could achieve the same thing. You don't have to get as close. First record of these being used is by the Romans who were besieged in Constantinople. By 700 AD, the Byzantine Empire would take ceramic jars, fill it with Greek fire, and then also include cow traps, which are similar to shark jacks. The Muslims and the Chinese also experimented with grenades made with Greek fire. But it was the discovery of gunpowder around 800 AD in China that completely transformed the grenade. Just like using the Greek fire grenades, they would take ceramic jars, fill them with gunpowder instead of the Greek fire, and then include rocks, glass shards, and metal. Gunpowder was first documented in the Zhongon Mande Taos alchemy text, which gave exact formulas. By 1350, the Holong Jing Manual, which translated to the Fire Drake Manual, gave specific instructions on making grenades. The first grenade mentioned was referred to as the Thunder Bomb. Again, a ceramic jar filled with rocks, glass shards, or metal, and packed full of gunpowder. Around 1460, the first cast iron grenade started to be used in Europe. By 1688, during the Glorious Revolution of the British Isles, which was the English Civil War, this war was what ultimately established the British Bill of Rights. During the Glorious Revolution was the first use of the word grenade, which is the French word for pomegranate, being that these ceramic jars were typically shaped and sized like a pomegranate. These were most effective with the use of ships and setting ships on fire at close range. It really wasn't until the 1850s that these became more on the battlefield when trench warfare first began during the Crimea War. Now these ceramic bottles were beginning to be filled with nails and were very effective in trench warfare. The first modern hand grenades came during the U.S. Civil War with the invention of the Ketchum grenade. Invented by William Ketchum in 1861, essentially looked like a giant dart. They used fins in the back because the nose, which was like a suction cup, had to strike, which then meant you had to use the fin, so it was thrown similar to like a football. It wasn't heavily used because it was very dangerous to use and it was much less effective than a rifle as the Civil War was not at all like trench warfare. In 1900, England had designated the grenade as being useless, but in 1904, during the Russo-Japanese War, the hand grenade transformed its effectiveness for trench warfare specifically. It was around that same year that the first modern grenade was invented in England and referred to as the hand grenade number one, or Mark I, invented by the British Royal Laboratory. Very similar to the Ketchum grenade, except for the fuse had a safety pin that you pulled and then you could strike any of the Mark I and it would set it off. Later the handle was shortened and referred to as the Mark III. Oftentimes, due to that large handle, the grenade would strike something within the trench as it was thrown, causing heavy casualties of the users. World War I brought about true modern grenades. In 1950, they had the first fragmented grenade called the Mills Bomb. It was also invented in England and referred to as the Mark V or the Number Five. It was made of steel and resembled what we see today as grenades being notched from the outside. 
However, they had trouble fragmenting and they believed that it would not fragment unless it had an internal notching. And then this grenade began to evolve, being both notched from the inside. The Mills bomb was modified so much that ultimately it led to the Mills bomb number 36. From then on, it was the only Mills bomb produced heavily with 75 million being produced during World War I. The number 36 was heavily used, but it was also one designated the number 36M, which had a stick that you'd put down the barrel of a rifle and you could shoot it from a rifle. Also in 1915, the French designed what was referred to as the F1. It's a percussion fuse that was timed. It was heavily used during World War I. Also that same year, 1915, the Germans produced the stick grenade which had a cord that would fall out of the bottom and you'd pull the cord which would then strike a spark lighting a five second fuse. Due to heavy trench warfare and very close combat when you're down in those trenches, eventually what was referred to as the concussion grenade was invented in 1918 referred to as the Mark III, specifically designed to protect the users. When World War II hit, another major advancement of the grenades came about. Now grenades, instead of based on charcoal as the flammable agent, they were based on white phosphorus. By this time they had perfected the fragmentation process and standardized the U.S. grenade referred to as the M26. Also during World War II, anti-tank grenades established. One being the sticky bomb, where a trigger would pull away the outer coat, exposing a sticky content. The sticky grenade would just simply attach to a tank or it can be thrown and it would stick to a tank. Also coming out during World War II was the Soviet RPG-40. It's a 760 grains of explosives, enough to penetrate 20 millimeters of tank armor. By the 1960s, the British had put to use a less lethal grenade referred to as a flashbang or M84. This would shock someone or temporarily blind them for the use in scenarios like hostage situations. It's also sting grenades, which were fragmented into rubber and was filled with hundreds of tiny rubber balls, causing great damage to the enemy, but not as lethal. Also came about in the 60s and 70s were smoke and gas grenades, typically using CS gas. By 1968, the US M67 grenade replaced the M26, was also a fragmentation grenade, but was smooth on the outside, as again, it's the inside fragmentation that counts. The M67 is still to this day the U.S. military hand grenade. But also invented around that same time was the M203 grenade launcher. This grenade launcher would attach to an M16 or an N4 rifle lower than the rifle barrel and forward of the magazine. The magazine became the pistol grip and the trigger was forward of the magazine and it had separate iron sights than the rifle itself. There was a variety of rounds invented for the M203 grenade launcher. The M433, a highly explosive fragmenting grenade made of aluminum. The M406, also a highly explosive aluminum grenade but with steel shrapnel. The M583A, which was a slow illuminating burning grenade with a parachute designed to launch into the air and then as the parachute would slowly lower it completely illuminated the battlefield. The M585 was illuminating location grenade mainly designed to help aircraft find people, as well as the M651, which contains CS gas, and the M576, which include buckshot. And the grenade continues to evolve. These are still the current U.S. military grenades. As wars rage throughout the world, the hand grenade will continue to evolve. And as evil always shows its ugly head, it's weapons like the hand grenade that allows to defeat it. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. And thank you for watching this episode of the History of Weapons.